So I'm sure a ton of you have heard of AirLink and Link Cable. These are ways of playing PC VR games on your Oculus Quest 2. And you would love to play Half-Life Alex, but you don't have a thousand or two grand set aside to buy a brand new gaming PC. So what if I told you there's a way to do it at a fraction of the price? So stay right there and we'll get into it right after this. So I got into virtual reality in 2016, which is kind of like the modern age of VR. And at that time, there was this big hubbub when Palmer Lucky said in order to do the Oculus VR experience, you had to have a high-end PC. Looking back, I realized that what he was trying to say was to do the level of reality that they were looking to achieve, you had to have a high-end PC. And we have since learned that you don't need that. But I think as a result of that, we've really missed out on all these high-end graphical, better experiences that eventually the Quest will have, and in many ways already has. A lot of you want this, especially now that AirLink and the Link Cable provides you that, but you don't have the PC to do it. So how do you go about doing that? There is a company out there called Shadow, and they essentially rent out a PC over the internet to use. This is the same as having your own computer in your house that has the right video card for VR, but putting it into a friend's house, let's say, and then you access that computer over the internet instead of directly to your PC using AirLink or a Link Cable. The software to do that is called Virtual Desktop. It is an amazing piece of software, but what I wanna do is show you what this experience looks like. Is it good, is it bad, is it better? How do you go about doing it? And I'm not gonna get too deep into it, I'm just gonna give you the basics. And is it worth it? Let's really kind of dive into this and take a look at what this is really all about. Okay, so here is what you need. You're gonna to go to shadow.tech, shadow you're going to sign up for a $30 month to month Shadow PC, and you may not get it right away. It may be a week, it may be a month. They are gonna look in to see if they even have a content delivery network in your area and then get back to you. Uh, I live in the Midwest in the United States and I got mine within 24 hours. The next thing you need is you're gonna need virtual desktop from the Oculus Quest store. If you don't use it for this, you'll end up using it for 2D gaming on a remote PC somewhere. Totally worth the purchase. Uh, the third thing you need is a good, strong Wi-Fi connection. If you already have a mesh experience in your house, whether it's Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi 6, Eero, Orbi, whatever, uh, it's probably going to be a very good experience. If you have a single access point somewhere in your house, like a single router, then just make sure you're, you're relatively near that device. And whatever it is, make sure there is a physical ethernet cable going back to your internet connection into that access point. You're gonna have a much better experience. And lastly, you need a 15 megabit per second low latency broadband connection. For those that don't know what low latency means, if you have a Lamborghini, it can do 200 miles per hour. Uh, sure, it can go fast, but if it's stuck in traffic and can't even get on the highway yet, that is low latency. So now let's get into what it looks like getting these all set up. All right, so you can see that I'm back here at my computer. I have the Shadow PC client up and running. This means I've received an email from Shadow telling me that the computer I requested is ready. They've provided me a download link for the software and they've provided credentials. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on start now. It's gonna start up the PC. Now I already have the Shadow PC up and running. If it were shut off though, it wouldn't take much longer to start up. You're gonna need three pieces of software. The very first one you're gonna need is the Steam client itself. Uh, you're just gonna go to steampower.com, download the software, install it. It'll have you create some credentials. Once you're in Steam, you're gonna need the Steam VR client. Just search for it like you would any other app or game on the Steam store and install it. It's gonna allow you to play Steam VR based games. Uh, the next one you're gonna need is the Oculus Rift client. You can go to oculus.com slash rift slash setup. Download and install. Uh, you don't need to do any configuration. You don't need to sign into anything. Then the last thing you're gonna need is the virtual desktop streamer app for the PC. Download that and install it. And then once it's up and running, only thing you have to do is click on change and then put in your Oculus Quest username right there. Uh, click on save, leave everything else the way it is. All right, now that we have our Shadow PC up and running, we're gonna go and get our Quest. All right, so here we are at the desktop. It's the exact same wallpaper, the exact same icons as you saw before. I'm gonna push the hamburger button on the left controller. That's the button with the three lines, it looks like a hamburger. I'm just gonna launch SteamVR and make sure everything's working just fine. Okay, here we are in SteamVR. There are my controllers. I'm looking left and right. Up and down, tracking is working. Okay, so here's what I wanna do. I don't actually wanna play any games yet. I wanna go ahead and put this all through its paces, do a little bit of experimentation. Let's take a look at how well the controllers and the headset are tracked. All right, so I didn't wanna yet show you me playing a game because you know what, that doesn't do you any good. It just shows you me playing a game and telling you the Shadow PC worked or it didn't. I wanted to instead find a way to show you how good the latency is or how bad that latency is. So every time I move a controller or you move a controller in front of your Oculus Quest, it gets translated into a visual that's inside the Oculus Quest lenses that your eyeballs then take in and you say, hey, that's my hand moving. 
But anytime you add distance, uh, if, whether it's miles or whether it's um, over multiple networks, you are adding time. The traveling of that information across that entire span, so if it's bad, it's going to be a bad experience and you could possibly even get sick because it's not just your control moving, but it's your tracking of your head back and forth. So here's what I did. I set up a camera pointing into the back of an Oculus Quest lens. I then took another camera focused on the LCD panel of that camera. And from there, I could watch the LCD panel as well as the controller moving in front of my Quest. So I can see what's happening with the, the controller outside the Quest as well as what the uh, Quest is showing inside the lens. All right, so here you go. To your top left, you have an Oculus Quest. On your bottom left, you have an Oculus Quest running virtual desktop going to my home gaming PC. And on the very bottom, this is an Oculus Quest running virtual desktop going to a shadow PC. Now keep in mind that when you see the controller go by the front of the Quest, the image that you see, the video that you see in the back of the camera, the delay there is gonna be greater than it is when you're actually inside the Quest, just because it's gotta go through the processing of the camera. But the Oculus Quest, this guy right over here, we're gonna use that as the control because that is gonna be the native and fastest. And the other two, you'll see the delay between them. Here we go. Okay, so that was crazy. So now remember, the camera is adding a small amount of delay by a couple of milliseconds, so there is going to be some latency that we are going to see, but that's artificial latency. When you actually play on your Quest, as you know, when you move your hand, it basically moves one for one inside the Quest. So when you compare what the Quest is doing natively versus virtual desktop on the PC and on the Shadow PC, it's almost imperceptibly different. I'm extremely impressed, and this goes for head tracking as well. So, okay, so we know the tracking is going to be good, but what kind of graphic quality and processing ability does this Shadow PC have? Because I know my home computer, I have a GeForce NVIDIA 2080 Ti, and that thing can handle anything I throw at it in VR. But what about the Shadow PC? I mean, latency being low is great, but what if it can't do the graphics? Well, let's run the Steam VR performance report and see what it does. We'll compare the difference between my home PC and the Shadow PC. Okay, so for those uninitiated, the Steam VR performance tool runs a benchmark on your computer to tell you if your computer is capable of running Steam VR games. On the left hand side, you see my gaming PC running the tool, and on the split screen on the right hand side, you see the Shadow PC. And one for one, they are identical. So, considering that my gaming PC is running an NVIDIA 2080 Ti, whatever is running on the Shadow PC on the right is either the same thing or something maybe even better. So, at the end of this performance tool, it's actually going to show us how well both performed and we're going to take a look at what hardware it detects. All right, so the results are in. On the left-hand side, you have my local gaming PC, and on the right-hand side, we have the Shadow PC. And you can see they both scored extremely well. Under system specs, we see the tool confirm that I have an RTX 2080 Ti. And on the Shadow PC, we see that it's now an NVIDIA Quadro P5000, which is just really a 1080, just with some more RAM. Under quality down here, we have the average quality on the gaming PC, the local gaming PC as an 11, which is very high, and basically the exact same thing at 10.9 for the Shadow PC. So these are matching up one for one, which is pretty amazing. Okay, so we have the latency looking good, we have the hardware looking good, so let's go ahead and do some side-by-side -side comparisons of graphics. Okay, so for this test, I have my Oculus Quest connected directly to the gaming PC over a link cable in the middle, and then the Quest connected over virtual desktop to the desktop PC on the bottom and the shadow PC on the top. You can see the link cable connection is a bit lighter in color and the, the graphics are a bit more crisp, where on the virtual desktop, both the desktop PC and the shadow PC, they are warmer colors and a bit muddier. And you'll see this throughout the remainder of the tests. Okay, so before we get started, there's a number of things that I've done to try to make this the best possible experience I can have. So let's go through this real quick. I replaced my Eero 5 with Eero 6. 
which gives me Wi-Fi 6. I replaced my 100 megabit uh, internet connection that had a 10 megabit per second up with a gigabit connection down and up. And then to make sure that gameplay went well on tracking, I reached out to, to Guy Godin, the developer of Virtual Desktop, and asked him what settings to configure to make sure that I get the best overall experience. Here's what he said. Defaults should work well. If the measured bandwidth isn't accurate, you can uncheck automatically adjust bitrate in the streamer window, but be careful with that setting disabled. It will let you stream at a higher bitrate than what your connection or server can support. Okay, so his response is perfect because it tells me that you don't have to do anything other than purchase the product and, and start it. From there on out, you're gonna have the best possible experience or most likely the best possible experience you can have. Okay, so let's jump right into it. All right, so that was a really good experience. But as I said just ahead of this, that I replaced my Wi-Fi and my internet connectivity to try to make this work. I wanted to prove it out, and I think I've done that. But just before all that, I, of course, had problems. So I reached out to three friends and had them try Shadow PC from their home with their Oculus Quests, not knowing who their internet provider is or not knowing how good or bad their Wi-Fi is. Here's what they had to say. So my experience was uh, easy to set up. So connecting to the uh, PC somewhere out in the cloud, um, that part was perfectly easy. However, once in the game, the lag time was troublesome um, in terms of like maybe one and a half seconds as you turn your head. So you really can't move very quickly. So do you see a difference in color depth, color use? Uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely, I'd say from what I've done with the Quest, this looks, this is the most realistic looking thing that I've seen. For me, yeah. not being able to really take advantage of the PC mm -hmm. version of the games, playing this, I wouldn't know there was a difference between the local cable connected. This is already drastically more detailed and um, vibrant than the, uh, the native games are. Okay, so that was perfect. All three of these guys experienced the exact same thing that I went through, which is the latency, whether it's the headset or the controllers. But they also get the flip side, which is the ability to play PC VR game if you don't already have a PC, along with the better graphics and possibly better gameplay and longer gameplay experience. So would I recommend Shadow PC for VR? And I'm going to tell you yes, but with some caveats. Uh, that you have the money, that you have the time, and maybe most importantly, that you have the patience to put into making it work. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I appreciate you all so much. Please like, comment, subscribe. And thank you to Virginia, Dan, and Dave. Thank you for the time and effort you, you always put into not just this video, but this channel. Thank you guys. I will see you here next time.